When it comes to performance hacking sport bikes, most people get in the path of trying to get more horsepower out of the engine. So what they'll do is in, they'll spend money on a full exhaust system, they might put a fuel management system on it, get it dyno tuned, they could get in the path of putting a race ECU or get the ECU flashed or something like that. And all of these, as I said, are designed to try and get more horsepower out of the motor. But there's other things you can do as well. Right, in addition to lightening the load, reducing the weight of the motorcycle, you can get down the path of re-gearing the bike, changing the ratio associated with the sprockets, and going to lighter componentry in this final drive area of the motorcycle. Now, like I advise other people to do, if you're gonna do this, go and get some advice on it. So I went and saw um, an expert in the field, Al Samuels from Race Dynamics here in Sydney, Australia, and I asked him, what would I do to re-gear this BMW S1000RR? We've got the 2015-2016 model fitted with uh, the HP4 accessories, including the, the wheels, the alloy wheels. So what he advised us to do is go down to a smaller sprocket uh, at the front, a slightly larger sprocket in the rear, lighten the weight by going alloy and going to a different chain. So we did that. We got a 16 tooth front sprocket from him and it was in steel. But uh, what that basically means is going to be similar weight, except for the weight of that tooth that's missing. So the original factory one is a 17 tooth sprocket. The rear sprocket that we got was a Vortex alloy sprocket. We couldn't get the 46 tooth sprocket for the HP4 wheels. So we went to 45 teeth. I just went stuck with standard. So what that means is we've got a slightly smaller sprocket at the front, and we've got the same size sprocket at the rear. So what that's going to do is it's going to extend the swing arm just a little bit because it's going to push the back wheel is going to go back just a tad to take up the slack by losing one tooth if we have the same number of teeth in the chain. Now, when we get the 46 tooth one, we're going to stick that on. But we went to the Vortex alloy sprocket so that it was a lot lighter. The other thing we did was we have installed the RK racing chain, the XW ring chain version in 520 pitch. And the intent of that was to reduce weight. So here we are, we've got the situation where we've got a different ratio and we've got lighter componentry. Um, the ratios themselves, by going down one tooth in the front, I think we changed the ratio, and by the way, there's a table down below that you can actually download. By changing that front tooth down one, we went from a ratio of 2.647 or something to 2.8 something, and what that means is Instead of this rotating 2.647 times to get one rotation out of the rear, it now rotates slightly more. Rotates 2.8 something turns, which is a little bit more in order to get one rotation of the rear sprocket. And by virtue of that, that means that we should be able to accelerate this bike more quickly and get access to torque earlier. So we've changed the ratio there. And as I said, there's a table down below which gives you a look at all those ratios for the different combinations. Now, by installing these parts, we save some weight. We put the 520 chain on, and then what I did was, in the process of changing these over, I actually weighed everything. Now, I'm gonna talk about why we would do all this stuff at the end, but I just wanted to give you the specs that we saw when we weighed the parts. Now, the rear sprocket. The rear sprocket, as I said, was steel, original steel with steel nuts that retain it. We replaced the original steel with a 45 tooth uh, alloy Vortex brand sprocket. And we replaced the steel nuts that retain the sprocket with uh, titanium nuts. And what that produced was a saving of 630 grams. And the original componentry weighed slightly over one kilo. So it's less than 50% of the original weight. So we've saved a fair bit just on the back end at the rear wheel. The front sprocket, right, as I said, the original, the, the replacement one came in steel, albeit at one tooth less. We say 46 grams at the front sprocket. What about the chain? Well, the original chain weighed 2.43 kilos. I don't know if you're aware of that, but you've got this spinning mass of a chain that you've got to accelerate, and it weighs 2.43 kilograms. The new chain gave us a saving of 400 grams. So it was slightly over two kilograms, and 400 grams close to half a kilo. Now, overall, the weight saving was this. The, the original componentry, including the steel nuts, weighed 3.73 kilograms. 
we saved slightly under 1.1 kilograms by changing the componentry. So that alone is going to help us because in theory, you should be able to accelerate that bike a little bit quicker by virtue of the fact you've got less mass that you've got to accelerate. So a 1.1 kilogram saving thereabouts. Now, the ratio itself, how did that perform? Well, what I did was I went out and uh, gave this bit of a run at the uh, local drag strip. And a couple of things I observed about it because I would expect that I could rev the bike a little bit quicker, which means we're gonna access torque earlier. It's not gonna produce more torque, it's just gonna allow you to get to that torque earlier. The things that I noticed was, first of all, when we were do, using launch control in the original drag racing that we did oh, a couple of years ago, when we were making launch control videos, we were comparing with launch control and without launch control. With the launch control, I noticed originally with the original gearing that if you let that clutch out too quickly, even though the bike is revving at 9,000 RPM, if you let it out too quickly, it bogs down very easily. Now, as we flip to this new ratio, what I noticed uh, when I tested it this time with launch control was that we revved it to nine grand. When we let that clutch out, it didn't bog down this time. What it wanted to do was wheel spin and wheelie. <laughs> So we actually still had some problems getting off the line with it, but um, it was more in the way of this thing was wanting to lift the front end up, which meant that the launch control and the, the, the stability system of the motorcycle was intervening and trying to hold the front end down. So we still had problems getting off the line, but I noticed a distinct difference in the power that was being, uh, in, in the way the power was being generated. Now, the other thing I noticed was uh, an incredible amount of mid-range uh, acceleration. And in fact, we were doing um, our runs at the drag strip and doing trap times of 145 mile an hour. And those times were significantly more than any other motorcycle that went to this meet. Now, it was predominantly a car meet. What I did notice was that our trap speeds were in the vicinity of eight and nine second cars. So, you know, it, it blew me away and exactly how much uh, this bike accelerator, particularly from the mid-range, and uh, I'm super impressed with the whole thing. Now, why would you want to change the gearing and the ratios here? Why don't you just go to lighter componentry at the back and, and settle with that? Well, one of the reasons is if, if you're riding around on a you know, 200 horsepower motorcycle that can do in excess of 300 kilometers an hour, you're not necessarily going to use all of that power and speed. Um, if you're racing a motorbike at Phillip Island, okay, you might leave the standard gearing because what it's going to do is allow you to utilize speed because it's a fast track. But if you're going to race your bike or do track days at Lakeside or Morgan Park, which are much smaller track tracks in, here in Australia, you've got this bike that's capable of doing you know, 300 kilometers an hour plus, you're not going to utilize that top speed. And secondly, you've got a bigger distance between the gears, which means you might not be able to generate the power in the way that you like it coming out of corners. By changing the gearing, you get different performance coming out of corners. It might be in a slightly different gear or in a different rev range within a particular gear. But ultimately, people play with gearing so that they optimize the performance of the motorcycle as they're coming out of corners. And um, yeah, it's just something to consider. So just to recap that, change the ratios, changes the way that you utilize power, allows you to access torque earlier. And secondly, changing the weight reduces the amount of mass that you've actually got to accelerate. So uh, go and get some advice on that. Um, you know, try the ratios that we've got here. Look down below, there's those ratios that you can download and you can have a bit of a play with this yourself. So uh, hope you enjoy that video. I'll see you in the next one.